Hello everyone, my name is Filip Paluch and in this video I will tell you what is a JSON Web Token, in short JWT, why JWT is a stateless authentication, what problem JWT solves, what are differences between stateless and stateful authentication, what is the asymmetric encryption and why it's so important when you use JWT, how third-party apps can simplify your life like AWS Cognito or Auth0, what are the consequences of using JWT? Welcome to Dave's and Wiles channel. You can use acquired knowledge in any language, so let's start. First of all, we need to answer what the authentication is and why we need it for. In today's world, we pay a lot of attention to the security of the system we use. It's crucial to check that person performing operation is entitled to do so. When you log into your bank website, you need to enter the username and password. Bank recognizes that you are you and gives you the access to your account. Once you have successfully logged into your bank website, you can execute further operation without re-entering the password until your session is valid. So let's describe quickly how the such solution can work. Authentication has been stateful affair for a long time. Let's users input their credentials, generate unique session ID, store that on the server side and return to the user. From now on, all the requests are sent along with the session ID to the server that stores logging data in memory or in centralized place. User session can be stored in a memory or in centralized place. In case of memory, there is one problem because all subsequent requests must go exactly to the same server, to the same application. In case of centralized place, all services that want to download user data needs to call additional service, additional store in order to collect logging data. This approach can be limiting for modern and complex architectures where we have many services working on different machines and getting uh, state from the central place can be troublesome for every operation. Stateless authentication is a solution to that problem. Stateless authentication is also called token authentication. Token-based authentication enables users to access certain resources based on special token without using their credentials and session stored on the server side to authentication to authenticate every request. The token is created by the authenticating service and contains all necessary information to authenticate the user. The token itself is uh, cryptographically signed to prevent tampering. Based on the token, service can identify the user, make authentication de decisions or audit activities. Do you like my movies? Please don't forget to subscribe the channel and click the red bell to get a notification when a new film comes up. Thank you. Let's dive into JWT tokens. JWT is an implementation of stateless authentication. From documentation, JSON Web Token, JWT, defines a compact and self-contained way for securely transmitting information between parties as a JSON object. This information can be verified and trusted because it's digitally signed. JWTs can be signed using a secret with the HMAC algorithm or public-private key pair using, for example, RSA. The names may seem complicated, but don't worry, I'm going to explain you everything in a simple way. There are two most common scenarios where JWT tokens are useful. Authorization, probably the most common use case for JWT. Once the user is logged in, each subsequent request will include the JWT, allowing the user to access routes, services, and resources that are permitted with that token. Information exchange. JWT tokens are a good way of securely transmitting information between parties. Because JWTs can be signed, for example, using public-private key pairs, you can be sure that senders are who they say they are. Additionally, as the signature is calculated using the header and the payload, you can also verify the content has been tampered with. I will show you now how JWT token is built. The token consists of three elements, header, payload and signature. The token consists of the algorithm type, which is JWT, and signing algorithm, such as RSA. Everything is encoded in base64 and this is first part of the token. Payload is the second part of JWT token. Payload contains information about user, expiration date, and some additional information that you want to provide. There are some recommended parameters like issuer, expiration date, audience, and subject. 
These parameters help to identify the correctness of the token. If you are using some additional third-party applications like Auth0 or AWS Cognito, for sure in the documentation you will find how to use those parameters and how to validate them. Signature, the last part of JWT token and the most important part. The signature is used to check that given data in header and payload section have not been modified along the way. You have a two possibilities how to generate the signature. First is a public and private key. Asymmetric encryption implies the use of two keys. A private key allows message encryption, this one-way function. On the other hand, a public key allows message decryption. This is also a one-way function. There's no way to encrypt message using the public key. This solution is most used by service providers like Auth0 or AWS Cognito. Only service provider uh, is responsible for storing private key, therefore it's impossible to forge the, the token. Authentication service is responsible for generation of, of the token, and your application then is using the public key in order to decrypt the message and validate the content. The validation consists of comparing the header and payload section with the header with the corresponding header and payload section from the signature. The second option uses hash function with provided secret key. What is a hash function? Let's check the documentation. Hash function is a mathematical algorithm that maps data of arbitrary size to a bit array of a fixed size. It's one-way function, that is a function which is practically invisible to invert or reverse the computation. This method assumes that secret key used to generate the signature is held by authentication service, but also by your application. In this case, signature is calculated based on three fields, header, payload, and secret key. The validation consists of generation of a signature on the application side based on header, payload, and secret key stored in that application and comparing that signature with signature from the token in order to validate the correctness of the token. This method is less secure because within your application you need to store that secret key. Okay, you already know what is stateless authentication, how JWT token is built, and what problem it solves. Now let's talk about how to use JWT in practice. Once the user successfully logs in uh, with their credentials, the token is returned. From now on, a token is added to all the requests when users want to, to access to protected resources. Usually in authorization header using the bureau schema. The content of the header should like the following. Authorization, header, bureau, and your token. Then your application needs to read um, the token from the authorization header and validate the correctness of the token in form of comparing the signature with data from the header and payload section. In previous section, I described the various mechanisms how to do this uh, depending on the chosen algorithm. As I mentioned, security of our application is super important. So it's worth to use solutions such as uh, Auth0 or AWS Cognito. Thanks to this, we are not responsible for storing sensitive information on our site, such as uh, user passwords and take care of their security. Instead, we can delegate that responsibility to third-party solutions that are definitely much more secure than that we could do. Like you can see on the diagram, uh, AWS Cognito is responsible for storing user uh, sensitive information such as passwords and also is responsible for token generation. So in our application, we only uh, collect the public key uh, provided by um, AWS Cognito and we validate the signature of the token. We don't store private key on our side. In the next video, I will show you how to use and configure AWS Cognito in the detail. Okay, you know almost everything about the JWT. Now you should know what are the consequences of using JWT. First, compromised key. The JVT based on the encryption using key. When this key is somehow stolen, uh, we can impersonate any user as soon as we know his ID and access all the resources. There's only one possible solution what to do in that situation. We can generate new key and deactivate all existing tokens, but it means that every user needs to log in again to the application. 
Second, cannot manage the client from the server side. Let's imagine a situation that the mobile phone is stolen. In that case, you like to uh, log out the user from all sessions uh, from your application. And uh, unfortunately, this is not possible also with JVT. Data overhead. You need to remember that you need to include the JVT token to every single request. In case of uh, really slow internet, one kilobyte of additional overhead can be the problem here. That's all guys for today. Thanks for the watching to the end. Check rest of our videos and see you next time.